Hi fellow artists, my name is Lauren, I am the artist behind Potato Art Studios, and in today's video I'll be showing you a time lapse of this very fluffy bunny drawing with pastels. So if you're interested in seeing how I colored this bunny right here, just keep on watching. If you'd like to skip ahead to a certain section, I will have timestamps in the description box below. I will also have all of the materials and art supplies that I use in this video will also be linked down below. I found the reference image for this drawing from Pixabay and this image is royalty free so it's free for anybody to use for any purposes and I will have that link also in the description box so if you'd like to download the same picture I used and maybe follow along with me you are free to do so. If you're not familiar with my past time-lapse drawing tutorials, I always have the sketch already done. Um, if you'd like to see how I set up my sketch, I have a YouTube video on that that I will link up in the cards and also down below. And I use the grid method to accurately outline the subject that I'm drawing. So that is why you see the grid marks on the paper before the video started. But the grid method, if you're not familiar with it, it's a very easy way to basically plot out the important features of your drawing so that when you're doing something that you hope to draw in a realistic style, you are accurately drawing the main features. When I first start coloring my rabbit, I try to block in the largest shapes of color first um, before I really get into any of the detail work. So I'll use my number one soft tool to apply the soft pastel onto the paper. And because this rabbit is a very unusual color of brown that I don't have so the rabbit is a warm brown and in my current pastel collection I have oranges and I have dark browns but I don't have that medium warm brown that the rabbit is for the majority of its body so you'll see that I'll be using a combination of my soft tool and pastel pencils to try and get that brown color after I have the general areas of the tan fur and the brown fur plotted out, I'll be going in and generally defining the areas that are highlighted, so the areas that are lighter and pop out of the page, and the areas that are darker. And the areas that are in shadow or darker will give the illusion that the rabbit's fur is quite dense. So when I'm working, I typically have my pencils that I'm using currently in my left hand and I'll be coloring with my right hand. So I have very quick and easy access to the colors that I am most frequently using at that current time. And I think that really helps speed up how quickly I can color because it's just a simple process of swapping pencils. So now I have the camera zoomed in just a little bit so you can see how I'm trying to refine some of the details starting at the top of the rabbit's head. And the rabbit has very bright white tips at the very ends of its ears and there's also areas of very dark shadows within the ear itself. So because these two colors are so different in value, I have to really make sure that I am not mixing the two areas because that would create a medium muddy gray. So when you're working with color, you have to pay attention to how one color can affect 
its neighbors and you'll have to strategically try and work around that. So a classic example would be if you have something that's white or something that's yellow and blue and you don't want to make a green, you have to be very aware of how you're placing your color. So now that the ears are a little bit more done, I'm moving down to the rabbit's face and we're zooming in even more so you can see how I'm working with the rabbit's eye. And I like to have the eye defined because that kind of makes me feel more comfortable that I have one feature really set on my paper. So the main features of any subject, whether it be an animal or a person, will be the eyes, the nose, and the mouth. So by habit, I usually like to have the eye mostly finished pretty early on in the drawing. And you'll notice that the eye is the darkest part of the rabbit's profile. So I will have the darkest values in the eye. So having the basically the black or the very dark brown on my paper helps me establish the range of values that I'm working with. If you're wondering about the pencils I'm using, I use a combination of three different brands. The pencils that have the red paint around them are Derwent Pastel Pencils. The pencils that have the color of the pencil, pastel pencil lead matching the outside of the pencil is uh, Stabilo's Carb Othello line. And the pastel pencil that has a plain wood outer casing is the Faber-Castell Pit Pastel Pencils. So with regards to how I work with pastel pencils, I usually try to go from softest pastel pencil to firmest pastel pencil um, because when the pastel pencil is soft, it allows you to cover more area more quickly. So you'll see that I use the Stabilo and the Derwent almost exclusively in this early stage of the drawing. And that white sheet that you see that I have kind of placed diagonally over the bottom half of the drawing is just a sheet of glassine. So it's a, just a very smooth semi-translucent paper and that acts as a barrier between my hand and the body of the rabbit so I don't accidentally smear the work I already had done in the beginning. And right here, you'll see that I pulled out a ruler and I actually made some markings on that piece of paper. And that basically just helps guide me for defining the details on the body um, because the initial grid marks I made have been covered by the base layer of color. I try to use the glassine as kind of like a ruler so I can get a general idea of where the arms of the rabbit start and where the major uh, chunks of fur are. So you'll see that I'll align the glassine sheet with the one inch markings on the very outer perimeter of the drawing and that just helps serve as a guide as I'm working my way down the drawing. So a great tip I learned that I try to use in every portrait is to avoid using black as much as possible. So for the very deep shadows between the rabbit's arms and where his feet meet the ground, I'm using a dark sepia and violet and that creates a little bit more visual interest than just using a dark gray or a black. So you'll see that I'm actually using a French gray sepia and violet for those areas. If you haven't seen my video about five pastel tips, I'll have that linked in the cards and also down below. 
but in that video I use makeup sponges to basically act as erasers or blending tools so that is the sponge you just saw me use to erase the one inch grid marks. To create the background, I'm using the Soft Tools number one blending knife and I basically run the blending tool across my green pastel sticks and then use the Soft Tool to apply the pigment. I find that if I use the Soft Pastel Sticks directly on the paper, it tends to overload the paper so I'm unable to get a smooth blend. So by building up light gradual la layers, I find that I get better and more satisfying results. Um, but it does take a little bit longer when you use that method. So to prevent the rabbit from looking like it's floating, I just created a horizon line and to make the horizon line look a little bit more finessed, I like to have a gradient that goes from dark to light from the top of the page to the horizon line and then I have another gradient from the ground level. So I use that clear ruler to help serve as a guide so that the line itself is at least level. It doesn't have to be very sharp or crisp, um, but having it straight is important. So now because the background color is on, I can go back to working on the rabbit. And you'll see that because of the green, I'm also trying to include some greens into the body of the rabbit so it looks like it belongs on the paper. So a good guide to have is if you have your background color, it's always nice to incorporate areas of that color into your main subject. And you'll see that I flipped the drawing upside down and that's because um, I'm filming and I don't want my hand to block the area that I'm currently working on, but also that it's more comfortable for me to work sometimes upside down and it does look a little bit funny, but your hand and your wrist make a natural curved motion. So I like to rotate my paper as needed so that my hand is not stuck making an awkward marks at awkward angles because that can lead to wrist fatigue and also wrist injury. So I'll be rotating the drawing periodically throughout the rest of the video as I'm working on some of the final detailed layers. So as I'm working on the left side of the rabbit's face, I chose to rotate the paper again so that I can make the detailed first strokes near the perimeter of the left side of the rabbit's face. And at this point, the Rabbit is, I would say, about 80% done. So all I'm doing in the last couple hours of the drawing is just really pushing the details. So because my mid-tone values have already been worked on from the previous couple days, all I'm doing is really bringing out the highlights and creating the areas of shadow so it looks like the rabbit's coat is really thick. And again, I rotated the paper 90 degrees so that I can easily access the feet and the bottom portion of the drawing. And now that, you'll s now that we're closer to the end of the drawing, you can see that I am bringing in the Faber-Castell pit pencils. And that is the pencil that has the plain wooden casing on the outside. 
so I usually make the switch to work with the Faber-Castell pit pencils during the last stage of the drawing when I need a firmer pastel to really make the fine detail marks. And in the very end of this rabbit drawing, I am making sure that I have that eye really nailed down. So I'm creating the very small details, so the shadow around the eye itself. Adding just very, very short strokes around the eye area. Because when you look at your subject, the first thing you notice is the eyes. That's typically where most people's gazes go to first. So I really want to make sure that I have that area well defined. And for the nose and the mouth, I'm just darkening the shadows just a little bit. And then the last step I like to do with any portrait is the whiskers or the longer strands of hair. And so for that, I will be using, again, the Faber-Castell Pit Pencil, which you see here. And it doesn't take much, it's just a short, fast stroke, and that will create the final details. So this is the finished portrait. And this is the portrait next to the reference image I was working with. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. Again, the link to the reference image I used and all of the materials and art supplies I used in this video will be linked down below in the description box. All of the links are non-affiliated. If you are interested in seeing more time lapses from me, I will also have a link to my entire drawing time lapse playlist. So I have about a dozen time lapses up already that you can check out. If there is an animal that you would like to see a time lapse of that I haven't drawn already, please leave a comment below this video and I would be happy to do a video on that in the future. So as always, thank you very much for watching. I will see you in my next video.